Hi, I'm Rachel and I live in this cabin in Alaska. It's a dry cabin and I love it. I left for a couple months after coming here seasonally for a few years and was initially going to house sit for someone over winter time and a few days before I was flying back to Seward they let me know that they did not need me to house sit and fortunately Hank who owns this property I knew that he owned this dry cabin, and so I came back for, it was my first winter last winter, and he rented it out to me. Okay, so coming in, this is just the entry door from the front porch, and if you're coming over into here, this is my little kitchen. So I don't have like a typical range or anything, I just have a little Coleman propane stove, two burner stove. It works amazingly well. I, don't cook a ton at home, um, especially not in the summertime just because I work a lot, but in the winter I cook a lot. And these little tanks last pretty a pretty good amount of time. I'd say sometimes they last me even close to a month. Yeah, they, they definitely do the job pretty well, depending again on how much I'm cooking and you know, boiling water, things like that. Those are gonna burn your things out faster. So I've got like a little electric kettle that'll usually boil water with first as opposed to boiling it on there. I kind of go back and forth with between cast iron and like more traditional, I guess, traditional pots and pans. It just kind of depends on what I'm cooking, honestly. I didn't grow up using a cast iron, so that's kind of something that's been more new to me, but I've really been enjoying using it. I mean, you don't wash them, so it's kind of nice to season them. Though it is like a camping stove, you're not doing like strictly camping cooking. You know, I feel like I can cook pretty much anything in this kitchen except for anything that would go in an oven. And I will say to me, that's one thing I do really miss because I'm a baker, so I miss an oven terribly. <laughs> but <laughs> Is that a door with uh, sawhorses for your... Yep, that is exactly what that is. Yeah, still got the door hinges on the back here, and then just put the little, the little sawhorse on there. So this is how when I moved in, this is how this was. Yeah, it's even got like the little, little vent on there too. <laughs> so then yeah, like going from there, this is where I wash. I keep all of my. So this is clearly a desk. It has the little slide out and drawers still on it. Keep just like utensils and things like that and all the drawers, dish rags. And this is where I wash my dishes. So I've got the water container up here. Um, and then this is just a basin that has a little drain in the bottom that goes into my little bucket. It's, it's honestly easy. I try to be really conservative with how much water I use because that just means I have to go haul water more often, which is fine, that's not difficult, but I'm also really forgetful sometimes. As far as how much water that I go through, again, it kind of depends summer to winter. Like in summertime, I'm so infrequently here just because I work a lot. Wintertime, I'm here a lot more often. I'd say in the summer, I'd probably go through one of these containers in like a week, maybe. This one's a five gallon. So yeah, maybe a week just again, because I'm not cooking here a lot, I'm not here a lot. Um, in the winter time, maybe two to a week. It just honestly depends on how much I'm cooking and how much I'm staying at home. And then I go haul my water. It's at an area down outside town a little bit called Little Point. It's just kind of a glacier runoff spring that they have set up with a hose on it. And so I'll take my containers and fill them up. Dishes are not difficult. The only thing that's kind of not the most comfortable with this system is that I have to bend down like super far in order to wash the dishes. This winter I'm planning on rigging up a system to kind of cut a hole into the desk so the basin can sit in there so I can stand more upright when washing dishes. Usually I don't use hot water to wash my dishes, I just use the cold and depending Depending on what I'm cooking, sometimes I'll just rinse them with water and not use soap. But if I'm cooking meat or dairy, things like that, then I'll definitely use soap and even sometimes use my kettle for hot water. But for the most part, it's just cold water and soap. And then this is just kind of my pantry area that I have, which is stocked with all sorts of things right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I KitchenAid. Um, again, I'm a baker, so I have that, though it doesn't get much use since I don't really have an oven. And then my little fridge, which honestly is since it's just me it's just one person it's more than enough space the only thing I find I need um, extra space for is fish caught throughout the summer so I have a big chest freezer out in um, Hank's garage and we keep all of our fish in there so 
got it stocked with some right now, but that's pretty much <laughs> not a lot of room for all the fish that we have. I eat an insane amount of tortillas. They are my favorite food, and I eat probably more than almost any person in the world consumes in tortillas, like up to five a day. It's kind of sick. <laughs> um, but as far as staples, I feel like it's like any anybody else's house. You know, I've got like mac and cheese and cereal and you know, things to cook like real meals, like black beans and things like that. So it's, it's not, I feel like it's no different from any other house that I've lived in other than I'm not going to be making like cakes and cookies. So it's really not that different. And if I want to do that, I'll just go use someone else's oven. I've definitely thought about getting like a propane range, but um, I'll have to figure all that out first and <laughs> see where it's going to go. I'll have to move my little sawhorse here <laughs> and put that in. Yeah. And then this is just kind of my little kitchen table where I do, you know, deal with bills, eating, all those things, sit and hang out. Some of this is stuff that I brought from my storage unit down. I was living down in San Diego and was going back and forth between these two states, just driving back and forth, and then realized I wanted to stay up here permanently, so kind of emptied out my storage unit and just brought a few things like table chairs and books and lots of books. It's super comfortable. A lot of people, you know, that I'm friends with know that I live in a dry cabin and then when they come over they don't expect it to be like a little home. You know, it's definitely really comfortable. I like having art on the walls. I like having things that make it comfortable and somewhere that I want to hang out. So coming from into the kitchen, this goes into my little bathroom closet area. I've got my composting toilet, which is the nature's head toilet, which is a pretty it's pretty user-friendly. At first I was like maybe a little bit intimidated by it, but I've grown to kind of love it. You use it, the, the pee goes into that front container there, and then if you're gonna poop, there's a little lever that you open that goes into um, just some composting material, which is coconut husk. There's a crank on the side that you kind of stir it up in and let it be. It doesn't smell. It doesn't, honestly, I've had probably one time where I had a pretty traumatic cleaning and that was my own fault. Um, I'd let it go a little bit too long and I've learned a valuable lesson on that. So, uh, well, it was kind of a combined my fault and just maybe like a little bit of, I so you have to have like a certain ratio of liquid to the dried composting material to start. You have to moisturize the um, the coconut husks, it's super dried out and you want to get it to be like kind of potting soil. And so I think I had put too much liquid in there and then I think usually I clean the compost part maybe like once a month, sometimes even like once every two months. Like, I don't know, I just don't find that I really need to do it that often. I may have gotten it, let it go a little too long and gotten some too much liquid in there. So it was just like a thick mud of my own poop and composting material. So I put like a full hazmat suit on and gloves and was just scrubbing it. It was less than ideal. So <laughs> lessons learned the hard way. Honestly, I think it's pretty great. You know, it's it saves water, which is awesome. You can put toilet paper and stuff in there. I just kind of choose not to because I, I don't know, I there's no real reason for me to, so I just use a little trash can on the side and put the toilet paper in there, but all around, it's a pretty easy toilet. I kind of love it. So not having a shower, I'll either, um, I teach yoga at a gym, and so I have that facility to utilize their showers, or I'll use friends' houses. Hank, whose property I live on, he has an Airbnb that he uses in the summer, and then in the winter time, he doesn't rent it out. So he'll let me use the showers over there sometimes, kind of depending if anyone's living there or not. So I have my whole little closet kind of over here too. So yeah, just closet, shoes, waiters, all those things. Um, and then just other toiletries, things like that. Just kind of keep it all stored in this little area. Coming out of the bathroom, this is just kind of another little closet area, like more clothes. And then these tubs under here have like camping equipment, surfing stuff, fishing stuff pretty much just all the gear stuff and just kind of keep it stored under there. And then this is a second door that just kind of leads to a back area of trees and forest and nothing. <laughs> but, and where I like to dump my compost too. That's, that's where the poop goes. <laughs> Got the bed where I sleep and then have, I don't have obviously a lot of place to store bigger equipment. So I've got fishing poles, surfboards, 
and cross country skis, snowshoes, all those things. And obviously there's always the under bed for storage too, which is, you know, I don't even know what's under there anymore. I think mostly just like backpacks and suitcase and stuff. <laughs> But, and then coming over this way, got the Toyo heater, which is uh, what I used to heat it. It's insanely good. This thing cranks up so hot, like it keeps it really toasty warm in here. It's, I feel like my cabin is kind of like the cheater dry cabin since I do have like a Toyo stove and I have electricity and I have a composting toilet. It's like, I don't use an outhouse. I have, you know, electricity and all those things, but you know, it's still, semi off the grid I would say but this is just kind of like a sitting area I've got instruments and books and couch and kind of just where I can sit hang out and relax I didn't paint it white I'd like to I kind of want to paint it a different color the white kind of drives me crazy especially the white floors the white floors are really hard to make look clean I've talked about um, doing some kind of like linoleum flooring or something like that, but we might have some foundation issues that might cause it to be a little wonky to do any other kind of flooring, but maybe just paint it. I definitely would like to keep this my home until I choose to buy my own property. Um, I definitely want to buy my own property, build my own cabin, things like that on there, but until that happens, I don't plan on leaving the spot. I'd say that the most difficult part of living here for me is probably the lack of oven. You know, the not having a shower here doesn't really bother me just because I do have access in other ways and I think it does make you realize that you really don't need to shower every day. Like if I wanted to shower every day, I easily could just go to the gym and things like that, but you really don't need to, <laughs> especially here. It's not like you're like sweating constantly. Um, but yeah, I would say probably the lack I miss do have, I miss having an oven but other than that, I really love living here. I like that I'm outside of town a little bit. I like that I have my own space. Um, I feel like I've been living in so many situations where I have like eight roommates and just nowhere to just kind of have your home that make it your own and just live a little bit differently, that's all. I would say if someone is questioning whether they can live like this or not, I would say they, sh and they're like thinking about doing it but not sure, I would say they should absolutely go for it. Um, it's amazing what a person can get used to. You know, people talk to me all the time about like, oh my God, I can't believe you have a composting toilet. I can't believe you don't live with water. It's so simple and it's, like I said, it's amazing what you can get used to and it's amazing how little you really do need.